Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to continue from our previous session on IS29, financial reporting in hyperinflation economies part three. So in this video, we're going to look at the practical example with statements to reflect the purchasing power as at the reporting date. So we have company H, a fictitious company that was incorporated in December of 2021 in Lebanon with a cash capital injection or contribution of 100 Lebanese pounds and the company started this operation in 2022. The following facts are relevant for this example. In December 2022, company H bought a piece of land for 600 Lebanese pounds and entered into a five-year loan. The land is measured at cost. In October 2023, company H bought inventories which remained unsold on 31st of December 2023 and company H's functional currency has been considered hyperinflationary since 2021. Right, so that's our base here. So the following table shows us a general price index of the economy in which company H operates on specified dates. On the price index at 31st December 2021 was 100 which is the base um, price index. Then for 31st of December 2022, the price index was 150. 31st of October 2023, when he bought inventory, was 180. 31st of December, which is the reporting period, it's 200. Then the average price index in the year is 175. All right. So we'll be given the financial statement before the restatement. We will have the historical purchasing power of 31st of December 2023. And at the first of December 2022. So all of this financial information up there has been prepared into a financial statement where we have the statement of financial position. You have land uh, measured at cost, uh, investment securities held for trading. We have inventories, which was acquired on the 31st of October 2023. We have trade receivables. We have cash. We have the loans, which was entered into by the company H. Now we have the equities share capital contribution on the 31st of December 2021, 100 uh, retained earnings and total equity and liability, which balances up. Then we have also the profit or loss and the OCI before the restatement. We have revenue of 1150, gain on changes in favor of investment, interest on loan payable, other expenses, and of course the net profit. So this is the information given. So based on this given information, we're going to apply the concept of IS-29 and restate the opening balance, the closing balance, and the profit and loss and OCI. Following the four steps we talked about in part two of my previous video. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll do what to encourage you to see the part one and part two of the video where we had the concepts and explain the steps to follow to restate a financial statement in line with IS-29. So looking at the first steps, a brief uh, principles to take note of. Firstly, we need to consider that the statement of financial position as at 31st of December 2022, which is the opening for 1st of January 2023, is restated so that it is expressed in the measuring unit current as at 31st of December 2023. So company H can apply only one of the following approach. One is to restate the historical financial position at the beginning of the reporting period, that is, non-monetary items in the statement of financial position as at 31st of December 2022 are multiplied by the change in the index from the date the non-monetary items were acquired or contributed up to 31st of December 2023, and the monetary items as at 31st of December 2022 are multiplied by the change in index from December 2022 to December 2023, for instance. The index for 200, which is the December 2023 uh, price index against the um, inception of 31st of December 2021 if it's a capital contribution. So you have a, an index of 1.3. Then the second approach is to multiply all assets and liabilities reported in the inflationary statement of financial position as at 31st of December 2022 that is restated or changes in the price index to 31st of December 2022 by the change in the index from 31st of December 2022 to 31st of December 2023. All right, so for the purpose of this video, we're going to illustrate approach number two. All right, so we're given the historical number, which was 
what was given in the information under column AE, where we have our standard um, statements of financial position of the assets, lands, investment inventories, trade receivables, cash, loans payable, share capital, and retained earnings. Right, so these are given. So uh, land was acquired in December of 2022, so this remains the same in uh, the reporting period prior to restatement. Investment security also was in um, December 2022 because the company started operations in 2022. However, we're told that there was a contribution to share capital at 31st of December 2021 of 100 Lebanese pounds. So that will be indexed up. So for us to do this, we need to determine what is the price index in December 2021 and the price index in December 2022. So we can see from this um, given information that the price index in 2022 is 150 and the price index in 2021 is 800. All right, so we'll come here and apply the price index on the share capital amount of 100 Lebanese pounds. So we'll do this equals to 100 multiplied by 150, right, divided by 100. So it gives us uh, our new share capital amount of 150 Lebanese pounds. Then our retained earnings is the balancing figure of 750. So I'll type in here 750. Then our account is balanced. All right. So for comparative purposes, we're going to uh, restate this opening balance as at 31st of December 2022 under column AF to then compare with the closing balance sheets or statement of financial position at the end of 31st of December 2023. So that takes us to the next uh, column, which is column AH. So we're going to do this equals to the 600 multiplied by the price index of 31st of December 2023, 200 divided by the price index for 31st of December 2022, which is 150, okay? So we have 800 as the new value for land. Then we have an um, investment in securities. So we apply the 150 on the price index for 2023 and against the price index for 2022 equals to 150 multiplied by 200 divided by 150. So we have investment security is now 200. Then inventory is zero as at 31st of December 2022. So it's new amount. Then for trade receivables, we apply say 200 multiplied by the price index for 31st of December 2023, which is 200 divided by the price index for 2021, 150. All right, so we'll do similar for cash equals to 350 multiplied by 200 divided by 150. All right, so we have our total asset of 1733 Lebanese pounds. Then on the loan side, we do 400 multiplied by the price index 200 divided by 150. So for a loan of 400, it's now indexed at 533 due to the purchasing power. Then for our share capital, we'll then be on the new share capital amount of 150 multiplied by 200 divided by 150, which is the price index for 31st of December 2022. Then of course, our retained earnings will then be indexed as well, which is 750 multiplied by 200 divided by 150, all right? So you can see that our assets equals to equity plus liability, all right? 1,733. So that's step one, restating the financial position as at 1st of January 2023, which is the opening balance. Mm. Monetary items such as trade receivables, cash, and loan payable as at the 1st of December 2023 are not restated because they are already expressed in the purchasing power at that date. All right, so let's consider this in our calculation. So our land was acquired in December 2022. So the 
price index to apply is the price index as at the 31st of December, which is 200 uh, over the price index of the 31st of December 2022, which is 150 equals to 600 multiplied by 200 divided by 150. All right, so the land is now indexed at 800. Then we're told that investor securities are taken as they are, which is 250. So for inventories, that was acquired on 31st of October 2023. So we need to use the price index for October on the price index for 31st of December 2023. So the price index would be equal to the amount of 100 multiplied by the price index as at the 31st of December 2023, which is 200 divided by the price index as at the 31st of October 2023, which is 180 from the table that we were given. Press enter key. We have 111. Trade receivables is taken as 500. Y cash is taken as 100. All right. So our total asset is 1,761 Lebanese pounds. Then our loan payable is taken as 400. Our share capital is indexed at the contribution date, which is the present day of the 1st of December 2021, equals to the 100 multiplied by price index as at 31st of December 2023, which is 200 divided by the price index as at 31st of December 2021, which is 100. Okay. We we'll have 200 as share capital. Then the retained earnings is the balancing figure, which is 1,161. All right. So that balances of our account to 1,761 Lebanese pounds. The third step would be to restate the statement of profit or loss and OCI. So a quick background to this is income and expenses recorded in the statement of profit or loss and OCI are restated to reflect changes in the price index from the date on which they are recorded initially in the financial statement. And in this example, an average index is applied. All right. So to reflect this, in our calculation so we have our given statement of profit or loss on OCI before the statement all right in column CC so as though that we're going to apply the price index as at the 1st of December 2023 against the price index for against the average price index for 31st of December 2023 so from the data or table that we're given our price index for end of the year 31st of December 2023 is 200 divided by 200 divided by the average price index in 2023 which is 175 all right it's similar thing for uh, the gain on changes in fair value of investment was the 100 multiplied by 200 divided by 175 then interest on loans equals to 100 multiplied by 200 divided by 175. Other expenses equals to 900 multiplied by 200 divided by 175. So we'll determine the profit before gain or loss on the net monetary position. All right. Then we need to determine what's the restatement amount between the amount expressed in December 2023 as the purchasing power amount against the historical purchasing power which is the difference between 1314 minus 1150 114 minus 100 this amount minus 100 and then this amount minus 900 all right so that gives us 36 so the time the loss on net monetary position so to calculate the loss on net monetary position we'll see this in our calculation in step 4 so let's keep this hanging and we'll come back to it after we've calculated this amount in our step four. So step four says calculate the gain or loss on net monetary position. So the gain or loss on net monetary position can be derived as the difference resulting from the restatement of the non-monetary asset 
owner's equity and items in the statement of profit or loss and the adjustment of index linked assets and liability. So these are uh, gain or loss is derived from three components. The first is from your um, monetary, non-monetary assets and owner's equity. And of course, items in the statement of profit or loss and OCI, which we've determined to be 36. All right, so we'll come back to this. So our table here gives us the difference between the amount expressed in at the purchasing power at this date against the amount expressed at the purchasing power amount as at 31st of December 2023. So for land, we had 600, which was later expressed as 800, inventories 100, which was later expressed as 811. So these are the differences resulting from that um, restatement. Then we have also on the owner's equity side, where we have uh, initial share capital 150, then later expressed as 200. There's a loss on this amount of 50. Then on retained earnings, there's a loss of 250. And of course, our 36 from the profit or loss on OCI. So that gives us an overall loss on net monetary position of 125. All right. So this 125 is what we then link back to our calculation in step three. So to determine the overall net profit, we move to pick the loss on the net monetary position of 125. All right, which is this amount. And then our overall net profit position is 161 Lebanese pounds. So we've come to the end of this video. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video. Bye.